Have you ever overcome any substance addiction? I drank myself to sleep just about every night. Welcome to the second channel. This right here is Mongolia. And right now we're waiting for some sheep to show up in a Prius. We have a little bit of extra time. Why not do a Q&A? Let's get into it. How do you approach traveling to a new country and trying to learn a new food culture? It starts with a good pre-production team. We have producers who are looking into the countries we're going to, doing tons of research and finding the most unique foods and ideally some of the most interesting cultures too. And then we agree on some final episode topics for the video. Then when I get in the country, I finally have a chance to talk to our fixers, the local people there and learn more about the food. How can I, as a tourist, get an experience with locals like you? Every country has tour guides. And honestly, in a lot of countries, it's really affordable. I recommend it. Places like Thailand, Vietnam, if you can do a food tour and pay 50 bucks, 60 bucks, it's completely worth it to have five different food experiences in a few hours rather than getting lost and trying to figure out where the heck you're going. You can ask questions and you can learn a lot from the tour guides. <laughs> How do you afford to travel to all these wonderful places? Money! my channel. It's a YouTube channel about something everyone can relate to, which is food and other cultures from around the world. And so luckily, a lot of people watch the channel. And so the channel gets revenue based on the views, based off the advertisements when they watch my videos. Have you ever been close to fighting or defending yourself from aggressive people while filming? If you want to know some of my worst travel stories, let me know. I'll do a separate whole video about those because they're kind of long and detailed. But the short answer is yes. When we were in Nigeria, we went to a place called Makoko. Makoko is a giant floating slum. 200,000 people live there. To get there, you have to snake your way through a bunch of short, narrow alleyways. Somebody started threatening me and my whole team. And so this guy was running around like, come on, give me some money. Give me some money. Give, give, give me some money. I don't know what he was saying. He's speaking the local language. He was doing everything but putting his hands on us. And luckily we had two armed security. The only reason I knew we'd be okay is because I looked at our security guys and they were like, <laughs> nice. But that was real scary. Was there any part in filming an episode where you actually had fear for your or your crew's lives? For me, we've been in some tricky situations, but I just thought this is gonna be an inconvenience or we might get kicked out of the country. I never actually thought, oh my God, I'm gonna die. Kai is filming me right now. Kai, did you ever feel like your life was in danger? Uh, we fly a lot. Ah, he said from flying. Turbulence. Turbulence. That's the only time I feel my life is in danger. All right, we're getting closer to the horses now. I'm not sure what they're doing in this event we're coming to today. There's gonna be a bunch of horse racing, so I don't think these horses are for food. Although many horses in Mongolia are. Hey Sonny, what's the thing you most want to achieve before you leave this earth? Maybe for me, it would be perhaps to start a family, have little Sunnies and Sunny Ets running around, bumping into walls, eating weird food. I'm 37, am I too old for that? Should I just retire now? They are about to milk this horse right here. now. Okay, he just yelled. I'm not sure what the purpose of that was. We've gone away from the milkers. They kind of shunned us a little bit. We're making too much noise. What keeps you going even though life can suck? I would say one thing for sure, try to surround yourself with positive people and cut yourself off of a reduced time with people who kind of make you feel bad or depressed or sad. Even if they're your family members, just don't hang around them. Oh, these horses are banging right now. That's fantastic. Nature. Oh, guys, romantic. What now? Depression? Don't tell your dreams and aspirations to people who are gonna make you feel bad about them. And then always have a goal, some meaning in your life, something you're working toward. For me, my 20s sucked. It was a very hard time. I had trying to learn a new career, failing college several times, being overweight, not never getting laid. <laughs> Until I developed this great personality. Now I have a lot of momentum. I have a company. I have a team who helps to make these videos possible. My life is immeasurably better than it was in my 20s. I'm like Tony Robbins. Can you share the saddest moment you've experienced during the making of a Bet First video? So I grew up in the North in Minnesota and in Minnesota, we didn't have slavery. We learned about it in high school, of course, but it just seemed like something that was so far away and lost in history long, long ago. But when I was in Alabama, no, what country was I in? Today we're in Jackson, Mississippi, taking on the most unique comfort creations in the South. I had chicken and waffles with a beautiful woman with a huge heart and incredible soul. And she was telling me about her childhood when there was still segregation between colored water fountains and white water fountains. I wanted to drink a water, so I was reaching for the white fountain. My mother almost, you know, jerked my arm out to socket because I couldn't drink out of the fountain because, you know, black and white people couldn't drink out the same fountains. How old were you then? I was about five or six. Holy shit. And that's, I'm, I'm 65 now, so that's just been 60 years ago. But here I am. And like, I almost broke down in the interview because I just was like, this was happening in your lifetime. What the f Okay. And I just thought of how inappropriate it would be for me to break down and cry, especially when I'm like not the one who suffered that. But I just felt so sympathetic towards her in that moment because she was such a glowing light. Ugh, that crushed me. 
that was a tough realization for me, for sure. Does your wife travel with you? Sometimes she does and sometimes she doesn't. Right now she's not with me in Mongolia. Wait, well, how come you came on vacation by yourself? I'm gonna do that next time. I'm gonna leave my wife at home and have her call in. How's the vacation going, babe? It's going great. How's our bedroom? Are there countries that your wife wasn't allowed to travel to with you? Yeah. Egypt. She was with me in the USA. Even through all four Egyptian embassies in the USA could not figure out how to get her a visa. That's what happened and it's the best thing that could have happened because then she didn't have to experience any of the BS in Egypt that I experienced. For four hours, we were interrogated by authorities wondering who we are and what we're doing here. In the end, they confiscated our lights, hard drives, batteries, and cameras. Where will you not go? You know, even if you go to a place that is very repressive or generally altogether awful, like North Korea, there still would be a great purpose in going there and revealing what it's like for those people there. So I can't really imagine many places that I wouldn't go. If you and your team survived a crash landing on a deserted island. Okay, first of all, if the island has dessert, I'm not gonna be sad. There's no food source. Oh, never mind. Which of your crew is the first on the menu? Who am I gonna eat for my team? Uh, pro just probably whoever's the newest. After trying so many different foods from around the world, how does your desire for more thrive? I don't know. I've been to maybe 45 plus countries now, and I'm amazed that every country I go to, I somehow find something new that I never imagined could possibly exist. Here in Mongolia, we just found a dish where they bleed the blood from the animal, then they separate the scabby red material. They use the remaining liquid, perhaps the plasma, to make a sausage. When they make the sausage, it turns white. So as long as I can keep finding new, interesting stuff to film, I'm driven to keep filming. Have you ever overcome any substance addiction? I don't really talk about this a lot because there's not really a reason to, but probably from the age of 23 to about 25, I drank myself to sleep just about every night because I just didn't know what I was doing. I was aimless, I worked crappy jobs, and I didn't really have any purpose in life. After I moved to Korea, I still had the same issue. I used to buy giant bottles of soju like this big for a couple of dollars. People use it for cooking. I used it for getting wasted. After about a year in Korea, it was too much. And I quit for about five months. And I found that ever since then, I try to keep it in balance. I have times where I work hard and then I have times where I uh, have a little bit of Jack Daniels too. Now it's not consuming my life and ruining my life, but there was a time where it really was. And I'm glad I'm not in that place anymore. It's my new program, quit alcohol, but still drink it anyways. <laughs> what is the maximum amount of money that you lost on a failed video? I don't do what Mr. Beast does. I don't try to put like a huge amount of money into one video. I try to keep the budget roughly the same among all the videos. Of course, it's more expensive to shoot in Africa than in Vietnam where I live, but no, I've never had one disastrous video that like took us down into the red. Do you ever want to go home when you've been traveling for a while and know you still got a big chunk of the trip left? I pretty much want to go home immediately when I leave. I love being home. During the Africa trip, it was so long. It was like six weeks. I just told myself, you live in Africa now. And that really helped. What is the most expensive thing you have bought for yourself? It's just some middle of the road SUV. We use that for shooting for a couple of months and then I sold it to my brother. So that's it. Nothing special, nothing crazy. No Lambos, no cool old motorcycles with the sidecar where my dog could wear a helmet and go Goggles, maybe. Come on, guys, keep watching, please. I want a sidecar for my dog. Hey, Sonny, if you are given two food options, raw bile mixed with raw blood or cucumber, which would you eat? This may shock you, but if I had to choose between bile and raw blood or eating cucumber, I would eat cucumber. Mm -hmm. Hey. The horses here are very hostile and aggressive. They bite. How do you get into contact with the more remote places and get permission to film? We use a local fixer. It's not like a, a normal tour guide because a local fixer has to understand permits. They have to understand shooting. They have to understand the type of location you want, that you want something more authentic and not some kind of corny tourist in the middle of Africa and they just wear outfits and dance around for you. Agreement. Yes, yes. Oh wow, that horse just took a huge dump. Yes, huge dump. They're probably like secretly telling me to, to get away or they're gonna bite me. Yes, yes. <laughs> How much would someone have to pay you to go back to Egypt? Okay, interesting story. A media company reached out to me after I left Egypt, said I should come back, they have connections, they'll pay for everything. I said, heck no. The only way I'm going back to Egypt is if somebody from the government explains that they're trying to take steps to make conditions better for tourists who travel there. Otherwise, you're not gonna see me there again. Besides doing this for a living, what is your other dream job and why? To be honest, I can't think of anything, yeah? This is great. The thing I'm genuinely curious about as an aspiring content creator and a person who loves food is how did you start? Start small. If you like my channel and you aspire to do something similar to this, don't look at where I am now. Go look at my first videos. They're still there. Honestly, it was, I mean, low quality, cheap equipment, bad editing. 
So just get started and to just continuously focus on how to improve and don't obsess too much about how many people are watching your content. When you start, you're gonna suck a bit. So keep working, set up a schedule, stay focused, and keep improving with each video that you do. Hey folks, how much is your net income from YouTube? That's really juicy and everybody wants to know, to be honest. It's enough that I can rent two offices in Vietnam, I can support a staff of about 16 people, and I can travel the world about half the time. If you watched to this point, thank you very much. If you have more questions or questions that I missed, please put them in the comments down below. I will either answer them next time or I will go write my own replies right now. You're gonna absolutely love our Mongolia content. It's very wild. You just got a little bit of a taste of mainly what horses look like. Also, we ate a horse. That is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. <laughs> Welcome to the Best Ever Merch Store, where you can check out our brand new designs. Best Ever Bandanas in black, white, and red. The Please Send Nudes Hoodie. Pillow Soft Fabric with a quality custom graphic inlay. And our Street Food Around the World Graphic Tee. We're now shipping everywhere around the world. Just visit shopbesteverfood.com or click the link in the description below to get your new merch today. A peace.